Right, well we're in the uh, the Dodge and, <laughs> oh dear, I'm going to start the car up, if it'll start and then I'll... Oh dear, let's try some choke. Oops, there's a wrong button there. I'm in a... Right. Oh dear, right, that started us. Try and keep that going. We'll put the um, the hand throttle on. Right, keep the revs higher just for a second. The choke is in. Right, all, I'm, all I've come in here for really, apart from just starting the car up, let it run for a few minutes for a change, um, is we're going in a second to uh, pick up the Mercedes. Now, the problem was the 4Matic uh, stopped working and the warning light came on. We then discovered that mice had eaten uh, one of the, uh, well, the high pressure hose from the accumulator where the pressure was building up uh, and, uh, and uh, we lost all the oil uh, from the reservoir, which I didn't even know there was a separate reservoir for that. Then, the next problem was that Mercedes, and I suppose not surprisingly, did not uh, still supply that particular hose because, well, it's, you know, 25 years ago and uh, it is a more of a specialized uh, hose because the formatic was not sold uh, in vast numbers, I don't believe. So we then went, uh, Ben took the, uh, the hose that had been chewed and took it to a hose company locally that produces hydraulic hoses for you and basically they said get on your bike piss off I'm uh, not those words but that's effectively what they said because they didn't want to know so Ben went to an, another place locally and he got the same reaction now I don't know what the problem was uh, guessing that it's just a tiny little hose that nobody's really interested in uh, locally we seem to have a, um, a lot of uh, or a number of these people that do these hoses because I think with all the farm tr uh, farm tractors and everything around here there's obviously a lot of hydraulics involved but it basically then he then managed to find a um, uh, away from the area a little bit find somebody who did come over and did make a hose and he fitted this new hose but after filling the reservoir bleeding it, getting rid of all the air out of it, and everything seemed to be fine, uh, the warning light still does not go out. Now that's where we are as of now. So I'm going up to pick up the car because Ben doesn't really, or isn't sure whether the formatic is actually working or not, because I've really got to take it out on some wet grass or something and try it. And, uh, you know, maybe it is working and we can't get the, um, the light to go out, or maybe it will go out when it gets booted in by working I don't know we'll find out so that's basically where we are we've seemed to have solved the problem of the chewed hose but we don't seem to have solved the problem uh, of the warning light being on as of yet that's a long explanation anyway we're gonna go up and pick up the Mercedes this is running nice and I'm still waiting here for Andy to come and fit the new uh, switch for the um, heater blower Turn this off. Right, well, we're coming up to Bennex. That lovely church over there, St. George's Church, or Church of St. George. This is Bradfield St. George's village. So, we'll now find out whether or not the uh, Mercedes is working. Right, I think we just. Uh, uh,
bends in here. Hello. It's tea break. Yeah, it was. It was. Hi. I'm all right. Hello. Hello, you're right. <laughs> Just down, huh? So, <laughs> what do you reckon I do with the Mercedes then? I think just use it. I'll take it down on the grass and see yeah, if it works. So the hose is done, there's no leaks, it's full of oil. Yeah, and uh, in theory it should work. Is there and also there's a bleeder yeah. where the accumulator is where the bleeder is. Right, on yeah. Side, and you have the engine oh, running yeah. and the pump is running. Yeah. Because they use the same pump for the power steering as two stage pump, and the second pump does the uh, formatic. All right, okay. And there's a tank, <laughs> when you look at the front, on your right, and there's a little plastic thing you take that, and there's dipstick on it. And I wrinkled that, so I filled all that, it's all down it. I've been up the road a couple of times just to make sure. <laughs> so when I've done the tap in the so bottle and we've got loads of air out until it's come through nice and clean and clear. But is the <coughs> is the reservoir then for the power steering the same as for the formatic? No. It's not, okay. Just the formatic. Okay. Just the pump. Yeah. The re there's a separate reservoir okay. for the power steering on top of the pump. So what about that bit, that thing in the... The only thing I was thinking about, there's that switch in the front, isn't there, where you... Yeah, well, I took that switch and I put it into a test... Oh, you did? All oh, right. Yeah, I've done all of that. No, yeah, OK, well, I thought you would. Yeah. And then uh, put it back again and... Uh, it still left the light on. It still left the light on. Right, well, I'll see if it's working. <coughs> I mean, if it's working and the light is still on, that's one thing. I even tried switching it off and on. Yeah, yeah. Just in case it reboots. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It could be there's... to clear the light because you've done the job as opposed to clear it itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, yeah. I'm, I'm so I'm saying, if, if the formatic is working and the light's on, that's that's, that's one issue. Yeah. But if the formatic isn't working, that's then that's cool. another issue. So there's two, I'll have to establish that. You're somehow going to tie COVID. Yeah, it? yeah. I mean, hopefully, the formatic will be working. Yeah. And maybe if it starts working, that will clear the light. I don't know. Did all right, I'll see. There's the cars over there, is it? Cars over there, key should be on the scene in some way, isn't it? Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. All right, I'll do that now. No, I'll speak, I'll let you know. Thank you. I'll see you later. See you later. You're, you're not coming Sunday, are you? No. No, okay. I can't be going nowhere. Oh, you're not going anywhere, okay. Oh, right. Well, I, I'd give you a lift in the Mercedes, but if, you know, yeah. All right, I'll see you later. I'll let you know. Thanks. Bye. Okay, I'll see you at home, I guess. I'll go over and drive it up, see if come back on the grass, test it out. Right. Yeah, the light's still on. Let's just see what happened there. Yeah, it comes on there. Right, so the only way to test this is put the memory seat on one minute. Oh, good time. So the only way to really test this is to get it on grass. So that's what we'll do. We'll take it home and have a test. Right, so we're back home. Now, the way this system works is that if one of the wheels slip, the yellow light should come on here in the middle and um, should go into four-wheel drive. So we'll see what happens. No, we got no four-wheel drive. No, not at all. No four-wheel drive. Right. Uh, so I don't know how that works now. Yeah, 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 it didn't come on at all. No, it would have shot forward. 
Let's put it into a hard lock situation and see what happens on the hard, yeah. So if we put it on a, if I reverse it on a hard lock, we'll see what happens. Now I'm going to put it on a hard lock and go backwards slowly. You see if you think the wheels are change, work, working independently, you know what I mean? They're okay, aren't they? No, I think you'd know. I was on a com no, I was on a completely hard lock. No, they, they would be skipping. Uh, one was I was on a completely. I'm, I'm on the hardest lock you can get, and it's just going around smoothly. See you another way. You pull up and have your two right wheels on the mud and your two left wheels on the concrete then the right one should turn and or the, these ones should turn that one should like just go slow one side you can't have grip and one won't well I could try doing uh, yeah hang on hang on a minute I could see if I could get one wheel to spin real, one rear wheel see it's when the wheels spin so if I can get one rear wheel spinning and the other not see what happens but it, it should just shoot forward really shouldn't it so I've got, have I got one re one rear ve wheel on the grass? Not yet. Oh. A bit further forward. A little bit more. Just a. Yeah, but is the the other wheels on the hard? Is it? Yep. Right. No. It didn't activate it. This side was going nicely, the other side was yeah. spinning. So no, basically... It's not locked, it's just not coming on. Yeah, it's just not on. Let's put that in the test position. Hang on. Function. How many positions is it got? Uh, two. Function and test. Put it on test. And then try it again. Every now and then you get at all. I think we're going to have to uh, get some advice on this from somebody. I don't know who. Nobody seems to know anything about it. I There was that guy who's on YouTube 
who does Mercedes, and he does a lot of videos on this particular model, on these old Mercedes, and I emailed him, never got a reply. I don't know why, because it's not doesn't seem to be that complicated in a sense, because you've got the sensors, you've got, um, there's obviously a switch somewhere that, there's got to be a switch that surely switches the four-wheel drive on. That's where we've got to find out what it is. What we need is really, we need a drawing diagram of it. Yeah, I know, I'm going to have to do that. Oh, look at this. Right, I'll park it up. Right, well, we're in the Aventine on a really wet morning and we're just going off to uh, somewhere that is actually car-related. Um, another aspect of cars uh, in my life, which is really what all these videos are all about. Uh, and that is uh, the fact that I'm on the committee of a classic car club and this classic car club is um, based in, a, in another club. The club is the Farmers Club in, in, in the town and uh, I'm a member of that club as well. So uh, it's a lovely old club, a typical old-fashioned uh, private members club. They're right in the middle of town. Uh, so, and we run the car club out of that as well. So I thought we'd just go down and have a look at that club because it's interesting, which is where all us guys, classic cars, uh, you know, have committee meetings and, and have events and various other things. Uh, but about the Mercedes, now, we've done everything we seem to uh, know about on this Mercedes to try and get it going, but we, we can't uh, fix it. So I've bitten the bullet and I phoned up a Mercedes dealer uh, near Ipswich who actually worked on the car, my car, a few years ago and did a really good job because they had a guy there who knew all about the formatic system and uh, they fixed everything that needed doing on the car at the time. I phoned them up and they still have a guy there and I spoke to him who is familiar with this formatic system, this original formatic system and they confirm they still have all the documentation on the system so they know all about it and um, my guess is that they're probably uh, the better than anyone they're able to um, deal with this car so I've booked it in and we're going to drive it up there uh, leave it there with them and when they get a chance they're going to try and uh, work on it now hopefully uh, there isn't much they need to do to to it because I'm I'm guessing that the um, the fault's been repaired, but the uh, the car hasn't been able to get booted back into um, working condition. But we'll see on that one. The other possibility is that it could be the accumulator has failed again because it ran without any fluid, or that the uh, pressure pump has failed because there again that ran without. Uh, oil in it from what we understand. So that's an ongoing thing that we'll find out in the next week or so. Uh, meanwhile we're driving through town here heading towards this club. This is uh, St. Mary's Church where I uh, think uh, Mary Tudor is buried actually. Sister of Henry VIII I think it is. And there's the uh, cathedral building. I don't think you can see it on the camera, but there's a cathedral there. Very busy here on a Saturday. But um, the club that I belong to, the Farmers Club, has a, uh, a car park right in the middle of town. Hopefully we get in it today. Um, This is uh, the club here on the left, all this building all running up here on the left. It's almost this whole block, or half a block anyway, it is the club. It's a car park here, it looks like it's fairly full. No spaces, I think. A card that we can use. This is the barrier. 
and then we get charged a, a sum to our account. So we'll just take a walk in and have a look at the club. Oh, good. That's interesting. Right, so this is the uh, club garden where we can uh, sit in the summer, which is very nice. And this is right in the middle of town, and of course we've got this lovely car park, which <laughs> you can see that it's half empty, half full, whichever way you want to look at it. But uh, at a time when the town is really crowded, it's nice to be able to park here and park at a reasonable rate. <laughs> 